from WXOJLP Northampton, 103.3 FM, your Valley Free Radio Station. Welcome. I'm Warren Odess Gillette, and this is A Baha'i Perspective. Welcome to A Baha'i Perspective. I recorded an interview with Ali Youssefi on July 1, 2019. Ali is a musician that composes songs inspired by the teachings of the Baha'i faith. Ali often creates videos for his compositions. Four examples that we play on the interview are Rise, Unite, Forgiveness, and Love is Shining. I'll post links to these videos on the interview post on the program website. Ali describes himself as a Baha'i-inspired musician whose melodies spring from the belief in the oneness of humanity and that music plays a crucial role in helping us feel more connected to each other and our purpose. I started the interview by asking Ali where he grew up and what was religious life like growing up. I actually grew up in Chile. I was born in the States, but my parents went as pioneers for the Baha'i faith to Chile when I was about two years old. So within the Baha'i faith, there's no clergy, right? So it's the honor and responsibility of every Baha'i individual to share the message of Baha'u'llah in whatever way they feel they can throughout their lives. So a lot of Baha'is have left their homes to kind of share this message of Baha'u'llah, who is the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith, and other parts of the world. So my parents decided to go to Chile in the early 80s. So that's where I grew up, even though... My father is Iranian. My mom is American. I ended up growing up within a Latin American culture. So I feel very Latino, <laughs> you know. And uh, Chile is a predominantly Catholic country. People were very devout in their faith within our family. You know, our family was Baha'is. And the main purpose of our being there being to share the teachings of the Baha'i faith with the community there in Chile. We always had our home open to anybody who wanted to hear about the teachings of the Baha'i faith. So we had regular meetings for people to learn about the faith, prayer meetings. So our house was always filled with activities, filled with love and filled with joy and people coming and going. Do you know how your parents became Baha'is? Well, my father actually was born also in a Baha'i family. Even his grandfather was a Baha'i. So on my father's side, they've been Baha'is for a few generations. On my mom's side of the family, was actually the youngest of my mom's sisters who first heard about the Baha'i faith when she was in college. And she became a Baha'i during those college years. And she was actually the one who little by little taught the faith to the rest of her family. And my grandparents became Baha'is, and then one of the other siblings also became Baha'i, my other aunts and my mom as well. The whole family is very familiar with the faith. Even those who are not Baha'is, they're very fond of the Baha'i teachings. So she became a Baha'i around the 70s. And the 70s in general was a time where I think a lot of people were very receptive to the teachings, particularly because of the unrest that there was at that time. It was a time of spiritual susceptibility, <laughs> in a way. So a lot of people were drawn to the teachings of the Baha'i faith. When we see the chaos around us, then we see a light that is shining. For me, the Baha'i faith really has such wonderful teachings of unity that at, at times I think people consider utopian in a way. But when you start reading into the writings of Baha'u'llah and, and his son Abdul Baha, they're really outlined not only these what could sound like idealistic teachings, but also almost like a step-by-step -step methodology to get there. And I think ultimately that's what every religion provides. You know, it's, a, it's a way of life that ultimately leads us to creating a better world. So I think in those days, a lot of people were very uneasy with the state of the world and were drawn to the teachings of the Baha'i faith. So that was the time that my mom's family became Baha'i as well. You grew up in Chile. When did you come to the United States? Well, we came a few times to visit, you know, because we had a lot of relatives in the United States during our childhood. But then it wasn't until actually I finished college. So I went to study music therapy in Argentina. My sister was living there at the time. She was going to school there. 
and uh, I had decided to study music therapy. And this program wasn't yet available as postgraduate degree in Chile, so I went to Buenos Aires to study. After completing my studies, my family had gravitated back towards the States at that point, and I ended up deciding to move to the States as well, to Virginia. I didn't spend that long in, in the States. I spent a couple of years in northern Virginia, like close to Washington, D.C., and then I moved further south. I had a very good friend in, in Charlottesville, so we decided to rent a place together, and, and I moved there. It was much more my pace, I think, than the suburbs of northern Virginia. I had family there and very good friends and everything, but still, I, I liked the pace of a smaller town. And Charlottesville is a very special place, and we had some really wonderful times. I was there for about four years. I think it was a very eclectic community because of the University of Virginia being there as well. My flatmate and I, his name is Kave, and he and I rented a place close to the university and he was going to school and I was working. And We started some activities there at our house as well and we had a wonderful attendance of university students coming regularly. And these were mainly devotional gatherings like where people from all faiths are invited to come and share whatever they find inspiring or soul stirring, you know. So we had people sharing poems or writings from other faiths, prayers, and a lot of the Baha'i writings and prayers as well. And there was a lot of music at that time. I was already involved in music and composing and everything. And we had several wonderful musicians in that community as well. A couple of very, very close friends that have become very good friends since then. So they would come also to the meetings and we would just have prayers and music and everything. And sometimes until very late at night, it was just a, a wonderful time. And the house would be so full. It was a you know small, humble house, but it was always packed and people going up the stairs, sitting on the stairs, you know, it was always filled with friends. Really some fond memories of those times as well. So I'm speaking with Ali Youssefi, singer-songwriter who's been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the uh, past 15 years. Ali, when did you discover music in your life? Well, music has really always been a part of my family's life. Very early on, growing up in Chile, we used to take trips to visit our relatives in the south of Chile and so on. Sometimes, you know, we'd be in the car for seven hours, eight hours. And of course, we didn't have the bounty of (laughs) DVD players back then, or I don't know if it's a bounty or not. But because of that, my mom had to come up with all kinds of creative ways of keeping us kids entertained on these long drives. And so she would do what her dad used to do on their long drives. So she would teach us songs. She would teach us different parts. She would teach us to overlap these parts and harmonize with each other. And it was kind of a game, right? According to my mom, also on long bus drives, I used to get up in front of the bus and sing for all the people on the bus songs that I had learned at my children's class. So in Chile, I went to a school of music during my elementary years. This was a pretty unique school in Chile. It was the only school that incorporated a full music program. And so we had our, all our academics in the mornings. Then in the afternoon, we had our music classes. We had to sing in a choir, so we're learning how to sing and different techniques and everything. And we had classes of harmony and music theory. Around fifth year of the elementary school, we had what was called like an exploratory year. So during that year, we actually got to explore the different instruments that would be a part of an orchestra or a band and even get a chance to play them and talk to the teachers. So after that full year of exploration, uh, I ended up kind of choosing the violin. (laughs) I would have liked to do trumpet or trombone, but the rumor has it that I was too skinny to blow into a (laughs) trumpet, or that's what they thought in those years. It was uh, probably not the most up-to-date theory right now but so I ended up playing the violin for about three years and playing in the orchestra of the school and everything so that was really my I think beginning into more like formal music education I learned a lot about orchestral arrangements and how orchestras work and the different dynamics of it and I think I started developing really a passion for music from then on music always played some part of my life as I grew older, actually, and as I was supposed to be practicing the violin, I really had a passion for singing as well. And 
I started picking up on the guitar. My mom played guitar. So she started teaching me some chords here and there. And then I would borrow her guitar and learn some chords from other friends as well. And then the time I was supposed to be practicing the violin, I spent more time with the guitar because I really wanted something to also accompany the voice. I really enjoyed singing. So I would just lock myself in my room and learn songs of different groups that I enjoyed listening to at that age. It was a very personal thing initially, I think. It was an outlet for me. Music was an outlet. So I would just enjoy singing at the top of my lungs in my room. And it wasn't necessarily for an audience or for anybody else. It was just for myself and just the sheer joy of singing. Little by little, music continued to play a part in my life, even though I, I moved to a different school from my high school. I actually stopped playing in the orchestra and, and stopped following music, kind of that musical path. And it wasn't until maybe a little later after high school, I decided to offer a year of service. It's very common within the Baha'i faith for youth when they finish high school or college, these in between years, as they figure out their life and decide on how they best want to be of service to the community and what they study and so on. It's very common for youth to take a year and devote a year to the community and offer a year of service. And during that year, they'll focus on community building activities such as education, like moral education for the children, empowerment programs for junior youth. And my family lived in Antigua at the time, and I'd really longed for time to spend with my family there. This is my aunt, who was the first one to become Baha'i, and my mom's family. My grandparents were there. So I would really always wanted to spend a little more time. So I decided to take a year and offer a year to the community in Antigua that I felt very connected to already. So I spent a, a year there, and this was would have been about 99, 2000. And really during that year, you know, I was already playing music and singing. It was actually the first time I actually sat down to compose a song. Very much inspired, I think, and, and my aunt also, who is a wonderful musician and artist. I think I, I was just taking in all that inspiration and artistic inspiration. So I was I was really moved to start exploring that and exploring sharing my own art with the world and to, to think of what is it that I have to say or what is it that I have to share musically. I really had fun with that process. So that's where I really decided to take the musical path. And when I returned from my year of service, I studied classical guitar for a few months and then I decided to study music therapy. So I'm speaking with Ali Yousefi, singer-songwriter who has been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for 15 years. And Ali, I had asked you to select seven songs from your various collections of music. Before we get into the first one, maybe you could say how many CDs you've produced. I've actually just released my third CD. So the first one was released, I believe, 2007. It's called One Step Away. The second CD, which was a collaboration with a couple of wonderful musicians that I met while I was in Charlottesville, actually. Or one of them I met at a conference in Florida. His name is Gustav Besungu. He's a Cameroonian percussionist. And so we immediately had some wonderful musical chemistry, and I invited him to come and visit Charlottesville, which he did. And we met another friend, Pam Hill, who had recently arrived in Charlottesville and was a violinist. We just happened to be at, at a gathering together at a commemoration of one of the Baha'i Holy Days. We all had our instruments and started playing together, and it just magically came together. You know, it was sometimes just sit down with, with other musicians, and there's just a musical chemistry. So we got together a few times, and then we decided to record a CD together, which is titled The Flight. So that would have been around 2011. And from then on, I was traveling a lot. So it was a little bit more complex to actually record an album. So for the years after that, I actually continued releasing singles. And I just recently released the first album since then, titled Daystar. The first selection that you had chosen was called Rise. So maybe you could talk about that one and then we can play it. Rise was actually a very, very special piece. It's actually released as a single. It's not on any of the albums. This piece is actually myself and a wonderful pianist, Afshin Tofigian, 
he is a classically trained pianist. And we actually had met at the same conference I met Gustav, the Cameroonian percussionist. And we also hit it off really well at that conference and talked a lot about music and composition. But we never got a chance to collaborate together. And it wasn't until a few years later that I actually went to serve at the Baha'i World Center, which is in Haifa in Israel. During the life of Baha'u'llah, he was exiled throughout his life. And the last place where he was exiled to was at that time part of the Ottoman Empire and what today is Haifa. So he was in the prison city of Akka, which is right next to Haifa. And he passed away not far from there. So this is the holiest place for Baha'is around the world. I went to serve there for a couple of years in 2010. Sheen had actually just arrived there not too long before. So we overlapped in our term of service there. We would get together often to collaborate and share musical ideas and so on. And so Rise actually started there. So it's a very special piece in that way also because it emerged during that time of service in such uh, holy places. No? It took quite a while for us to kind of hone in on it. And both of us like to take our time, we'd compose parts of it and then let it sit and let it simmer for a while and <laughs> get together a couple of weeks later and continue working on parts and adding parts to it. And and then we had the idea of creating a video for it as well. So there's a video for that song that you can find on YouTube. We had a friend who was a filmmaker who was also serving there at the time, and, and he helped us with that. And so that's uh, this piece, Rise. So what's the significance of the title? The title comes directly from the quote. It's taken from a book called The Hidden Words of Baha'u'llah. And these are very short, very mystical writings. It's written form of God talking to man. This one hidden word says, Oh, fleeting shadow, which I just love the title, right? It's, it's addressing mankind and it says, Oh, fleeting shadow, pass beyond the baser stages of doubt and rise to the heights of certainty. So this is Rise.
speaking with Ali Yousefi, singer-songwriter who's been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years. And we just heard his song, Rise, which he also mentioned is a, a video on YouTube. If you can search, I guess, for Ali Yousefi and Rise, you'll find the video. So the next song you chose, Ali, is called Unite. So tell us about that one. Oh, that's definitely one that has a very special place in my heart. I also composed that while I was living in Haifa. It actually came about very casually. <laughs> we were having a meeting, a reflection gathering with our department, the department I was serving in. It's usually customary with with the Baha'i meetings. We start with prayers and some writings just to kind of be in the right spirit. So I'd been asked to prepare some, like a little program to begin with and to prepare maybe some music and something to teach everyone. When going through the songs that I had already composed, couldn't think of something that was, was like very easily singable and and teachable and everything. So I sat down literally the night before, uh, opened a, a prayer book, and there's this one prayer that stood out to me, and it was a prayer about unity. And there's this one part that says, "Unite and bind together the hearts. O Lord, make these faces radiant through the light of Thy oneness." So I just started playing around with that and. I taught it at that meeting, and yeah, you know, some people learned it, some people didn't. <laughs> but then I kept singing it to myself, and I kept kind of growing in my mind. And again, I, I really believe in letting songs and melodies kind of simmer a little bit, you know, because sometimes there might be a little rough, and then the more you sing them, the more they kind of find their place, both rhythmically, melodically. So I continued singing it while I was in Haifa at different meetings and different devotional gatherings. Particularly, the youth really enjoyed. The more people learned it and sang along with it, I felt like the more power it really had, you know, which was quite beautiful for me because it it really exemplified the quote itself. It was just bringing the quote to life through music. Actually, I think a lot of people who were on short terms of service, whether a year, two years, they ended up going back to their communities. They must have taught it in the different communities they were in because. I think people little by little started learning it to the point that I once traveled to Germany, I think it was, and I sang it at one of the meetings and somebody asked me, oh, like we sing this year all the time. Where did you learn it? And so I was quite surprised that it, it started making its way around on its own. And I always had a vision for that song that I would love to also create a, a visual representation of this effect of more and more people joining in and this message spreading, this message of unity spreading. As I traveled, I think within a period of probably about a year and a half or so, I just happened to have a a lot of trips in different regions and everywhere I'd go, I I had this basic recording of the song and and everywhere I would go, I I just asked people, you know, I have this song that I'm working on, would you be interested in, in singing or do you know anybody who would be interested in singing? I just continued traveling and adding people to it and you know, and got to a point where that I had several videos and and we did the same with instrumentation actually. We had a few trips that, you know, I asked a couple of friends who again Afshin for example is one of them who added a beautiful piano track. On one of my trips back to Haifa after I had left, uh, we had met this wonderful Japanese musician actually. He was not a Baha'i but he was living in, in an artist town outside of Haifa and he's actually a blacksmith and he builds musical instruments like steel pans and so on so i just loved that having you know a japanese gentleman who is a blacksmith and is living in israel but is making caribbean instruments for me it was also a wonderful representation of that 
unity and that diversity that we're looking to create and really celebrating. So I included a few other friends, one of my other dear friends. He and I actually continue to collaborate till this day. His name is Mike Gannon. Mike and I actually met back in Charlottesville while, while I was living there. He and I have continued to create music together. He helps me produce. So I asked him to add a, a slide guitar. He's a magnificent slide guitar player. And then it so happened I was living in Serbia. After I left Hi-Fi, I went to Pioneer in uh, Eastern Europe in Serbia for four years. I had a, a friend actually in one of the neighboring countries, Croatia, who actually does sound engineering. He was grateful enough to help me edit this project and help me with the video and everything because at that point I had just so many videos from around the world and so we sat down his name is Ivan Ivan and I sat down and, and worked on this video and so it, it was a, an endeavor that took from inception to the time that the song and the video actually came out is quite a few years one of the most popular songs that I've written at least people seem to love it and I think kids for some reason are, are very drawn to this song every few days I'll receive a, a video or a message from someone in different parts of the world saying how their kids like to sing this. Every single time brings so much joy to my heart just to know that it resonates with the hearts of children around the world. It's very, very special for me. So this is called Unite.
So I'm speaking with Ali Youssefi, singer-songwriter who's been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years. And we've been featuring two of his songs that he also happens to have videos associated with those. And I will be posting those links when I post this interview on the website. Ali, the next song that you selected to feature is called Daystar. So why don't you tell us about that one? Daystar is actually the title of the new album. You know, I told you that I like to let songs simmer. And for me, even though that I've just released this album, uh, it's one that is still kind of like simmering. It's still setting in. I haven't even played it for people live that much yet. Again, a quote from the Baha'i Writings that says, Oh, my friend, thou art the day star of the heaven of my holiness. And then it says, Rend asunder the veil of heedlessness. I love this concept of us being, you know, day stars and the potential that is latent within human beings. I think one of my biggest passions in life is also education. And there's some beautiful writings in the Baha'i Faith about the role of education in unlocking the potentials of human beings. And of course, this is not only talking about an academic education, but a spiritual education as well. So for me, it's a quote that really addresses our inner nobility you know, and our inherent nobility. A lot of times the world throws all kinds of things at us and uh, our life hasn't given us the opportunity to develop in, in so many ways, but actually those opportunities are always there. And, and I think just reminding ourselves of that inherent nobility and the role that we have to play uh, in the world. And so to think of ourselves as, as really a day star of the heaven of God's holiness. So the potential that we have to really shed light upon the world, for me, is very special. And at the same time, as a title, Daystar is utilized a lot in Holy Scripture to signify this brilliant light that sheds radiance upon the world. I interpret it also to refer to the manifestations or prophets of God, as we call them in the Baha'i faith. Their role is to, and their purpose is to shed their radiance upon all of humanity. This is where the title Daystar comes from. Oh, my friend, thou art the day star of the heavens of my holiness. Of my holiness Let not the defilement Of the world Eclipse thy splendor Eclipse thy splendor Peril of life and array 
all things with the apparel of So I'm speaking with Ali Youssefi, singer-songwriter who's been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years, and we've been listening to his songs. The last song we just heard was called Daystar. The next one you selected, Ali, is called Adversity. So why don't you tell us about that one? (laughs) Now that I'm mentioning all these things out loud, I'm seeing a lot of them were inspired by time in Haifa. One evening, I got together with a couple of other friends. One of them was from Canada. So his name is Mitch, and another from Tiamike from Malawi. So we sat down and started fiddling, and we ended up composing this piece together. For the recording of this, I actually reached out to both of them. They were very happy to take part in that. So it's a very special recording as well, because my friend uh, Mike, who is the friend that I met in Charlottesville, who also mixed this album so four of us singing and this particular quote starts by saying "O son of man if adversity befall thee not in my path how canst thou walk in the ways of them that are content with my pleasure and for me it's very clear that when it says "O son of man it's really addressing all of mankind men and women alike so the fact that it started saying "O son of man and these four men are singing about adversity I really like that and how it correlates musically. Son of man If adversity befall thee not In my path How canst thou walk In the ways of them that are content How canst thou walk in the ways of them that are content with my pleasure? Son of
I'm speaking with Ale Yosefi, singer-songwriter who's been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years. Actually, each of the songs are, have been Baha'i sacred scripture put to music by Ali. And we just listened to the song Adversity that was taken from one of the verses from a work by Baha'u'llah called The Hidden Words. The next song that you selected, Ali, was called Forgiveness. So why don't you tell us about that one? This is actually from a prayer, also from the Baha'i Writings. It's a prayer for forgiveness. It's a very special piece because it's actually the first piece that my wife and I were able to work on together. And then even the selection of this particular prayer, that was something that we decided together. We also released a video for, for that one. So this song is also part of the new album, Daystar. For me, it's a very mystical video because the prayer in and of itself, what better way to express that but to use the fogs of the rolling hills in California where we were living at the time. For many days, we woke up early in the morning in search for (laughs) fog, which we discovered is very elusive. So this is called Forgiveness.
So I'm speaking with Ali Youssefi, singer-songwriter who has been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years, and we've been sampling some of his songs that he's made over the years. The next one that you selected for us to listen to is called Sorrow Not. So Ali, why don't you tell us about that one? So Sorrow Not actually, I think, came into the world (laughs) in a way that is very different than many of the other pieces that I've composed. This was a year that I was serving in Serbia. And this was during the period of fast. So Baha'is fast for a whole Baha'i month, which is 19 days, from approximately March 2nd to March 20th. It's a very special period of not only a material fast, but also it's a period of prayer and really introspection and a spiritual preparation in a way for the year. I think it was the first day of fast. The quote is absolutely heartwarming. As soon as I read it, I just knew it had to be a song. So I just read it several times and a melody just began to emerge. It was very different than the pieces I I usually compose because I typically compose with a guitar, so I'll come up with a harmonic movement. And I'll find something that kind of fits that. In this particular case, I didn't feel the need for a guitar. It only wanted to be the human voice. I actually worked on it every morning after my prayers. So little by little, this melody began to emerge, and it actually became more of a choral piece. So by the end of the fast that year, I managed to finish the composition and the recording of the song. For me, it was just a piece that wanted to be born. I almost feel like it's really not mine. I just happened to be there So this is called Sorrow Not. Sorrow not if in these days and on this earthly plain things contrary to your wishes have been ordained and manifested by God for days of blissful joy of heavenly delight are assuredly in store for you Spiritually glorious will be unveiled to your eyes. You are destined by Him in this world and hereafter to partake of the benefits to share. In their joys And to obtain a portion Of their sustaining grace To each and every one of them You will no doubt attain To each and every one of them You will no doubt attain to each and every one of them. You will no doubt attain to each and every one of them. You will no doubt attain. So I'm speaking with Ali Youssefi, singer-songwriter who has been composing songs inspired by the Baha'i faith for the past 15 years, and he just played for us Sorrow Not. Now the last selection, Ali, that you chose is called Love is Shining. So why don't you tell us about that one? So Love is Shining came about inspired in the previous song that we talked about called Unite. For me, Unite was one song that after seeing the effect it had on people, how much children liked it, and people enjoyed singing it and learning it, I felt like 
I have to create something more along those lines. I rarely do that. I usually find quotes that just speak to me in the moment. And I follow that inclination to compose something. So this is uh, an excerpt from a quote by Abdu'l-Bahá. He mentioned some things before, and then he says, So strive, therefore, to create love in the heart, in order that they may become glowing and radiant. When that love is shining, it will permeate other hearts. This resonated with me, this idea that as we strive to create love in other hearts, love is going to spread. I love getting people to sing. I love having a group of people singing in a meeting and just like more and more voices joining in. I think a message takes on such a powerful effect the more people join in. In this particular case, I decided to try something a little bit different. I opened up the invitation on Facebook for friends to participate. It was a little bit more risky because in the case of Unite, I was for the most part personally the one recording people. So I had the the equipment. I could coach them if there was anything that we needed to work on or redo. But in this case, I was just putting it all in the hands of friends around the world. I expected that maybe I would get a few videos from my sisters and my, <laughs> my family and maybe a few close friends. Actually, most of the videos that I received were from random parts of the world. I received videos from Greenland, from China, Australia, from Russia. It was just so surprising that most of the people I received videos from were people I didn't actually know or had no connection with. So this is this is how Love is Shining came to life. To create love in the heart Love in the heart To create love in the heart Strive therefore To create love in the heart Love in the heart To create love
Love in the heart to create love in the heart. Ali, I want to thank you for sharing your music during this hour with us. Thank you so much for having me on and for taking interest in the art that I've been creating. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Ali Youssefi, a musician that creates music inspired by the teachings of the Baha'i Faith. As I had said at the beginning of the program, Ali has made videos for several of the songs we played in the interview. I'll be posting links to those videos on a Baha'iPerspective.com, where you can also hear this interview and other interviews. You can also listen to Ali's interview on my YouTube channel, A Baha'i Perspective. For information specifically on the Baha'i Faith, you can go to the website baha'i.org or you can call the number 1-800-22-UNITE. I hope you join me next time on A Baha'i Perspective. This is WXOJLP Northampton, 103.3 FM, your Valley Free Radio Station, streaming at www.valleyfreeradio.org.